Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Royson. I am super excited to continue our new mini-series on machine speed concerns. In this week's show, we discuss five potential speed limits to any machine. Three are related to physics and two are related to economics. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. We've all heard the saying, good, fast, or cheap. This show will cover all three, but the focus will be on speed. Those five speed limits we will talk about here include air entrainment, vibration, process limitations, design, and economics. The physics of air entrainment has been well known for 35 years, so much so that the volume of air pumped between the web and the roller is a simple equation. This equation is useful for any system that is simultaneously not narrow, not slow, and not rough, as covered in previous shows. The 5,000 students who have taken my award-winning and trademark Web 101 class will readily recognize the details. For others, we have ample references, including the must-have 750-page Web Handling Handbook. Similar physics hold for the wound roll, though that system is a bit more complicated. So, why does this matter, you should ask? The answer is that increasing speed causes an increase in the boundary air entrained between the web and roller or between the web and wound roll, and that, in turn, will reduce traction. Eventually, you will reach a speed where all traction is lost and then all runnability is lost. While details vary, this ranges from measurably reduced to totally lost traction is on the order of 100 to 1,000 feet per minute or 30 to 300 meters per minute in the metric system. If you want to go faster, you have many options for rollers. All involve increasing the surface roughness of the roller commensurate with the volume of air and train. Grooving and roughness can easily be solved by simple equations, as my Web 101 students know. However, if you have a wound roll, you only have one option to go faster, and that is to use a nip to exclude some of the air. Most winders have that option, even though a nip can be problematic in so many ways that we don't have time to mention here. The subject of the relationship between nip and tightness and between tightness and defects is covered in great detail in the advanced winding section of my Web 101 course and elsewhere. An increasing level of complication happens when machine vibration increases unacceptably with speed. This again can be broken into the same two categories, roller and wound roll. The roller is the simpler of the two, but still far, far from simple. Only a few machine builders know how to reach very high speeds, and they are all in the paper industries, specifically paper mills, where speeds exceeding 6,000 feet per minute or 2,000 meters per minute are routine. Much, much harder still is wound roll vibration. I've worked nearly full time for more than a year on that subject alone and many times since. Very, very, very little practical remedy has been found despite decades of work and 100 publications. Then there are process limits, which are largely physics-based. These include certain coating rheology limits, cooling capacity, and drying capacity, to name just three common ones. There are more. 
However, we will not go into any details here because they vary so much with the specifics of your application. Then we have machine design limits, the most common of which, and the one most easily moved, is motor speeds. A bigger motor and re-gearing of the gearbox may be all that is required. Indeed, it is common for paper machines to now run faster than the original design speed. They are able to do that because the machines were built quite solid and stable to begin with. Slightly tougher is if you happen to have rotary components other than motors that are nearing their design limits. However, this is not nearly so common or limiting as you might think. Rather, what is far more common is not physical speed limits, but rather psychological speed limits, mostly having to do with what people are accustomed to and thus more comfortable seeing. I have just given up pleading with the designers to design electrically for just above what the customer desires, but mechanically twice that. The reason for this dual recommendation is simple. Motors are expensive, but it is not usually very expensive to make sure that there are not other components that have RPM limits. Even if you never need to rebuild to higher speeds, a machine designed mechanically for 2,000 meters per minute will run smoother at 1,000 meters per minute than one designed for and never tested at higher speeds. I know this from direct experience. Forty years ago, I had designed and operated the fastest winder, 10,000 feet per minute. Forty years ago, I designed a 20,000 foot per minute lab machine, though I couldn't quite get to that speed despite many trials. To me, I often find the discussion of machine speed limits quite boring because the workarounds and limits have been long known in the paper industries. The last speed limit we will discuss here is economics. That should be no surprise to anyone who follows my work. If you can get orders to feed the beast, as they say, then there are many options to consider for the existing machine or perhaps for a second machine. Economics, in the end, is the only speed limit. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion of speed limit of web machines. Stay tuned for next week's show where we will discuss speed differential, sometimes inappropriately called draw. If you have a topic you would like to hear about, let me know in the comment section below. If you found anything interesting or useful here, Please like and share and subscribe. See you next time.